to talk about hypotheticals, how, how the idea that we could have cause and effect apart, which the Course is teaching us that God and Christ are together, and that cause and effect are actually together, they're one in spirit. But this world is as if they could be split off, and as if we could have hypothetical futures and hypothetical pasts. And this is a teaching I did years ago that's it's really at the core of, of, of awakening. And it's kind of interesting to me because I've used this teaching before, like with Gary Renard, who's a friend of, of Jennifer's and I, that, uh, this idea of art and persa, and, and as I go around the world, it's people would come up to me and they go, do you, do you know Gary? And tell me the truth, you know, did this, did this really happen or not? Is this, did, did art and persa really come onto his couch and, or not, and this and that? And, uh, and then, I remember I, another friend of mine is Jimmy Twyman, and you know he wrote this book *Emissaries of Light* and the *Silent Brotherhood* and Kosovo. Some of you are familiar with that and everything. And I get the same thing, you know. It's like, is there really a *Silent Brotherhood*? You know, do they really have this sitting in a circle and praying for mankind and and all these adventures they had and everything? And then we mentioned Marlo Morgan. Uh, I remember when she got back and started to do a little bit of a lecture tour. Big controversies came up, like, did she really meet these aborigines, or I is this... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm using these three examples as points, is that the underlying assumption is that, that, that in this world you can make a distinction between what really happened and what didn't happen. You see, and that's where we get into hypotheticals because the all of linear time is hypothetical. And when Jesus is teaching us the separation never happened, the atonement is the awareness that the separation never happened, he's really teaching us that cause and effect are together, have always been together. And that song about just my imagination running away with me, that everything that you think in terms of the past and future is all hypothetical. And I always remembered my grandfather, Harry Heinrich Hermann Hoffmeister. <laughs> Harry, very German name. Uh, Heinrich Hermann Hoffmeister. He would always, when I was a little kid, I was getting taught a course in miracles from Heinrich Hermann Hoffmeister, but I didn't know it because I would be there like I was a big sports fan, so I'd be there watching football game with him or the baseball game or whatever. And he was just this jolly, happy man. And I would be talking to the television screen, yelling at the referees, you missed that call. <laughs> and I'd say, if the ref hadn't blown the call, my team would have scored. And he would laugh, laugh, barrel laugh and everything. And then, you know, oh, it's a player. If we hadn't had a penalty, we would have, you know, all the, da, 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 if it did, if, if, if it. And he would like, Heinrich Hermann Hoffmeister would raise his one finger up and here I am, just a little boy, and he would smile at me, and he would go, if, if, largest word in the English language. <laughs> and I realized, it took me years before I realized, that was Jesus trying to reach me, you know, as a little boy, about these hypotheticals. And think about all the worry and concern that goes into the hypotheticals. Concern about your, your weight, or your diet, or... You're, what you're going to do in the future, or how you're going to be provided for, even, you know, all the things that seem to be so practical, all those hypotheticals. And really, when you look at what the Course is teaching us, and what Jesus is really teaching us, is, is that's the problem. The problem is believing in hypotheticals. The problem is believing that, that there even could be two categories of, it actually happened, and it didn't happen. If it's all images, and it's all the past, and it's all over and done. How could we have two categories of what happened and what didn't happen? Even that, you know, all the, all the controversies aren't really controversies at all. It's just the ego's belief in imagination, in the idea of hypotheticals. That's the problem, is believing in hypotheticals. And just think of it, this very instant, if you gave your mind over and just were allowed to be shown the impossibility of hypotheticals, 
It would solve every problem right now. Trust would settle every problem now. You know, think of it in terms of like relationships, like Ben and Karen. If there were no hypotheticals, what joy! What joy! Are we gonna sleep together tonight? Will, will there be any touching, any affection? Will there be sex? Will, will I be able to have money to buy a computer? Will I have control of my bank account? All the, go on and on and on. If, 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 it's all just hypotheticals. That's the simplicity of salvation. Just starting to see that none of it has any meaning, because it's all hypothetical. Look at any relationship, look at any struggle you have, any worry, any concern about the future, about being provided for, about where your life is going to hypothetically go. Really? <laughs> it just, it starts to become laughable. It's all hypothetical. And that's, I think that's the greatest joy, is just starting to be shown that we can let go of that. We don't have to think like that anymore. We can be in glee, we can be in joy, we can fully appreciate this very moment and, and see that that is the most practical thing and that all this hypothetical thinking is just a big cobweb of distractions that always has some suffering with it, always has some misery. It has nothing to do with the way we were created, it has nothing to do with who we are. And there's no controversy in the present moment. There's no controversy. Jesus says those who seek for controversy will find it, but those who seek for clarity will find it as well. Are we going to be clarity seekers or controversy seekers? Are we going to seek for the moment and open to it, or are we going to keep playing hypothetical games about coulda, woulda, shoulda? That was what I was screaming about with my, my grandfather laughing at me as I was going all of these hypothetical things and him just hilariously laughing at me. And me getting mad that he was so happy. <laughs> How could he be so happy? He wasn't really rooting for any team. He wasn't seeing the possibility of, of coulda, woulda, shoulda. In heaven, cause and effect are together because God and Christ are one in spirit. And this whole world is the belief that cause and effect can be separate. Number one, that, that Christ could leave the mind of God. That Christ is an idea and the mind of God and cause and effect are together. This world is the belief, this whole cosmos is a belief that Christ could leave, the effect could leave the cause. And then it's projected out and every, like, you know, you've got a PhD, I was in university for 10 years, every discipline that we've ever studied, every discipline is based on spurious cause-effect relationship. Everything from Newtonian physics, for every action, there's a reaction. I get that. I get that. Yeah. It's the cause and effect thing together that I'm looking to deepen my experience of. Yeah. Well, the only way we can we can know that is we have to really actually experientially get that 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 it's impossible that everything we've believed about this world, which is all based on on false cause and effect, split cause and effect, has no validity and no reality because that's the underlying split. The idea that, that cause and effect are apart, and that cause comes first, and effect comes second. And it's just not the case. And so when I discovered this, you know, when I was doing the course many years ago in the, in the 1980s, it was like, wow, 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 help me transfer this. Like with diet and nutrition, you know, all false, all false, all based on false cause and effect. I just looked at all the disciplines I'd studied. I studied a lot of different disciplines, took a lot of classes in 10 years of full-time in university. And then I got the course, and I was like really hanging in, like, okay, hanging in there with Jesus. And then it's like, oh my God, everything I ever learned, everything I ever learned was false. And that set me free. That was what set me free. And then to, to practice that and teach that, that's what all these seeming relationships and seeming things over the years, over this last quarter of a century, has been tr transferring that and making no exceptions to that, making no exceptions to the miracle. And seeing how humbling that is, but how joyful and gleeful 
that is. I think of my grandfather just laughing and laughing and laughing mm -hmm. and holding that finger up and going, if, largest yeah. word mm -hmm. in the English language, and I would be like, you know, but it was this Holy Spirit using this 80-some-year-old man, like a wise, you know, medicine man, a tribal man in the tribes, you know, wise, 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 holding that finger up, going, if, if, if. And, and how that's, what a time saver, what a, what a saving grace that is to just begin to see wrong about it all, you know. I could be hurt by nothing but my thoughts, you know. Thoughts, mind is a level of causation. I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. It's a great release because it pulls it off the screen. And, and, and I've had fun with that over the years, you know. I remember I was living in the Peace House one time and, and, and people got into the, to the refrigerator and they opened it up and they were like, oh, like the milk had gone completely and everything. But they left it in there. So, and then they later watched me in the kitchen go in there and pour a glass of milk and, and talk to them as I'm drinking the milk and they're just going, oh, my God, what's he doing? You know, then they had to play a joke, a practical joke, but, but it's, it's mind over matter. It's, it's all mental. It's all mental. Or the people will say, oh, you did too much travel, you need to rest, you need to rest. Rest doesn't come sleep, doesn't come from sleeping. Rest comes from waking. Rest comes from purpose. Rest doesn't come from resting the body. You don't ever really feel restful from resting the body. That's just, again, false <coughs> cause-effect relationships. So you give yourself over to this, this idea of simultaneity, this idea that everything is of the mind, that there's nothing outside the mind, that all causes in the mind, and then you practice transfer, 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 and and that's, to me, what true forgiveness is. It's making no exception to what the metaphysics are. Of course, it's great to have Jesus with his divine metaphysics because they're spectacular. They're just absolutely spectacular. But un unless we transfer the training, unless we practice the teachings and make no exception, as he says, we won't, we won't really know the full experience that's available. And that's what we do. That's what our mind training is about here. That's why we're happy to be about our mind training. And there's so many opportunities to come up and forgive. So many. Like, like your friend, the, the woman who was, the teacher who was saying, it's more favorable, advantageous to practice in a group. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just wham, it just hits you <laughs> from every angle, you know, with a group. And that's really what we want. We, yeah. It's just, we want it, we want to come through it. We want to transfer it. Bring it on, yeah, yeah.